Good morning. Good morning. morning. All right. Welcome to worship this morning. Good to see all of you out here in the Grove and those with us online this morning as well. Um, I would invite Lisa and Warner to come forward. They have a couple of announcements for us today. And as they are coming forward, I would encourage you to stick around for the Strawberry Festival or come to church after worship for the Strawberry Festival. Lisa is going to talk a little bit about what is happening there as well. Um, But they're opening. What do we call that? A shack or what do we call that? Snack stand. Snack stand. The snack stand is in process. So I am excited to be a part of this festival today. Um, come on up over here so that you've got the microphone so everybody can hear you. And um, Lisa, if you want to start to continue the conversation with Strawberry Festival. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Mm-mm. Did that work? I think so. No? Good yes? Morning. No? All right, we'll try that again. Good morning. Okay, all right. So I'm here to represent the youth. Um, We are not having VBS this year. It just didn't work out. So what we decided to do is have the youth meet once monthly, and um, they're going to complete community service projects. So our first project will happen today during the Strawberry Festival. So from 11 to 1 o'clock, um, so if you're not here now at service, you have time to, co- to get in the car after service and get here, but we will be making cards for the residents of Gracedale. There's 520 residents, so we really need a lot of help. So we're just making cards. You decorate the outside and you put a message on the inside. If you're not a decorator, I'll give you the paper to write your message, any kind of message, and I'll give you samples of that. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do for the youth is on June 11, July 11th, that's going to be an ice cream social. And what we're going to be doing that time with the youth is we're going to be decorating and assembling gift bags to give to members of Gracedale. So we need the congregation's help. We are going to get Thrivent dollars to purchase the items that go in the gift bags, but we also need your donations to help us out because that's not going to be enough. So I have little slips of paper if you want to see me after service, and that will... um, tell you the items that we're looking for so that you can go out and buy them. And I'll have a basket up on the bench um, during the week if you want to just drop your stuff off and I'll collect it every night, okay? Um, If you can have those items in by July 9th, that would be helpful. That way I can go out that weekend and purchase whatever we need. All right, thank you very much. Thanks for helping the youth. Good morning. Um, Jim and I want to uh, thank the congregation for allowing us to represent you at uh, Senate Assembly 2021. Uh, It was truly an uplifting experience, and we invite other members uh, to consider representing the congregation at future assemblies. Uh, If elected, however, in the future we'll serve and continue to serve and hopefully grow spiritual as, as a result of this experience. Senate Assembly was conducted online, uh, Zoom, on Friday, June 4th, and Saturday, June 5th. It began Friday at 1.30 p.m. and closed that Friday night at 9 p.m. Saturday Assembly began at 8.30 a.m. and ended 12.15 uh, uh, noon. Uh, Pastor Christy Forrest was installed by, as Bishop of our Senate, in a separate service from 3 to 5 on Saturday afternoon. The Bishop of ECLA, Elizabeth Eden, officiated that installation. Um, Over the two-day period, uh, Senate had four sessions. The overall theme of the Senate Assembly 2021 was growing young and vital. That's growing young and vital. Our own Pastor Jennifer uh, was uh, one of the presenters of this theme, which suggested that one could be over 60 years old or older and still grow young and vital. Um, 
the theme focus at the uh, second session, which was from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Friday, was Heal the Hurt. One of the focuses of this session was how, to, how the church had partnered with Good Shepherd Rehab and is involved with physical rehabilitation and social rehabilitation. Churchwide church uh, presenters on this theme focused uh, was uh, Jim Jennings, the ELCA uh, Church Council, and Jody Slattery, a churchwide representative. The growing young theme is, is present here and asked the question, uh, what are we doing to heal the hurt? Uh, session three, which was from 8.30 a.m. to 10.20 on Saturday morning, the theme focus there was love the land, suggests we reimagine stewardship. In, a, uh, in addition to being stewards of God, cre of God creation, let's also uh, consider being stewards for each other, uh, children of God. The growing young theme is also present here. In our last session, session four, was from 10.35 a.m. to 12.15 on, on Saturday. The theme focus was in engaging the stranger and asked the question, what are you doing to tackle the issues of the day with those who you don't know? Uh, Jimmy and I concluded our, our experience here of feeling that we were young and growing young and, and vital. And out of a lot more details that are on the uh, Senate website, that a bulletin of reports, we also would invite you to contact Jimmy, myself, or, or Pastor Jennifer if you want any more details about the particulars of, of Senate. Uh, but we voted in the affirmative with all the issues that was up for vote and all the issues that we voted for passed. Any more details, again, you can check with one of the three of us. Thank you. It was indeed a busy Senate assembly, but it was a good one. So we thank Warner and Jemmy for being there representing this congregation. I did want to let you know that the council meets tomorrow night to discuss uh, the next steps and protocols for in-person in attendance at worship. So I would invite you to be mindful of that and keep our leaders in prayer and then check out the newsletter and this Thursday's emailer for more information as that will become available. I invite you to take a breath and prepare your hearts and minds for a time of worship. Please stand as you are comfortable and able for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we hear the word this morning. The first reading is from the third chapter of Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in truth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust. There may yet be hope to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults, for the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the second book of Corinthians, eighth chapter. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks. to God. Gospel according to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. Glory. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came. When he saw him, fell at his feet, and sobbed out of desperation. My little girl is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with them, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. 
She had heard about Jesus and came behind him in the crowd and grabbed his cloak. For she was thinking, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that the power had gone out from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who clung to my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leaders of the house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only trust. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he entered, he said to them, Why do you make commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those that were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was about 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I always find that very funny, that Jesus doesn't want anyone to know, and yet everybody knew that this little girl was dead. So, I mean, come on, Jesus, what's really happening here? And then, of course, get her some food. That's the first thing, right? Part of the healing process. So I want to ask... What do you do when you reach the end of your rope? How do you respond to suffering? In anguished moments, what language do you use? What do you believe or trust? To whom do you turn? From where does your help come? In the gospel today, we have portraits of people in dire circumstances, in deep hopes and faith, that these individuals defy what the world would consider to be good sense. And at the center of it all is the vulnerability of these characters. Jairus, the leader of a local synagogue by gender, position, and status, enjoys a comfortable level of power and prestige. A stark contrast to the hemorrhaging woman who has been afflicted for more than a decade with an illness that has not only been painful, but also placed her on the fringes of her community. And then we have this young girl, sick unto death, with no rights, no power, no say in what will happen to her, all united in this extreme vulnerability. Jairus, I wonder if he's thinking, I know that we, the leaders of the synagogue, are mad at you, Jesus, for healing on the Sabbath, but I have nowhere else to go. So he is reduced to this painful helplessness that every parent feels when a child is ill and throws himself into a posture of begging. And then we have this hemorrhaging woman who has sought a cure for some by some so-called expert, and was made sicker and broke, and is also at her last chance. And she heard about this Jesus and pushes through the crowd in its potential hostility in hopes of only a touch. And then there's this young girl wasting away with with only hopes and prayers to surround her. Now, Perhaps we've become too accustomed to Jesus' healing and compassionate response that it doesn't make much of an impression on us. 
But just now, at this place in Mark's gospel, it's worth noting that this is extraordinary. That Jesus responds to different, to three different characters' vulnerabilities, restoring them to health and life and wholeness. This is a pattern in Mark's gospel. Jesus everywhere and always notices and cares for and responds especially to those who are most vulnerable. Because he always responds with health and life and wholeness. Jesus touches them and connects with them and joins himself to them with his compassionate embrace. Touch, hapto in Greek. Hapto means cling to, adhere to, attach oneself to. It's not just a simple, I'm going to reach out and touch his garment, but I'm going to grab this sucker and hold on for everything I have. I imagine the same happening with the young girl as Jesus reaches out to her and grabs onto her, bringing new life as well. It's in this touch that there is restoration to family and to community. Touch was one of those things that I missed most in quarantine. I mean, Scott is a wonderful hugger and all, but touch seems to be important. I remember the experience of heading over to Pittsburgh and hanging out with some colleagues, and my colleague Ross was the first person I hugged outside of Scott's hugs. And we held on for dear life. And it seemed that in that moment, I was restored in my soul and in this community to which I belong. And then this past week, we got to go home to Nebraska and see my dad in that first hug at the airport, even though it was 106 degrees, it was still a good hug in the outdoors. Woo. And then there was grandma, whom I just did not want to let go of and share giant hugs because I missed so much with grandpa's funeral. And then there was my cousin Julie, who just grabs on and like squeezes the breath out of you and shakes you till you can't move, kind of hug. And then there's the running great nephews that come from the ch kids I had not even met yet come running with giant hugs, being restored into community. The one touch that I will hold most dear is my great nephew, who's six-year-old Chaz. Chaz um, was officially adopted by my nephew and his wife and became a fooer on Thursday, and then on Sunday was adopted into God's family in his baptism. And so I got to stand as Chaz's godparent. And, and like any six-year-old, Chaz has zero focus. Right? So during the long Lutheran liturgy of explaining what water means and why it's so important in baptism, Chaz and I played and touched in the water, mostly to see which parts of the baptismal bowl were hot and which were cold. But in my head, this was the touching of God's healing for this young boy who has been claimed and named in a new way. What moments of touch do you cling to or attach to from Jesus and God in your life? In today's story, it was both touch and the proclamation of renaming. This hemorrhaging woman was cured when she attached herself to Jesus' cloak and she knew it and she felt it in that moment. But the healing happened when Jesus stops the procession, calls her out, speaks to her, calls her daughter, gives a public demonstration of her cure and a deliverance from ritual purity, this act then completes her salvation. And it creates new possibilities for her going forward. Her identity is transferred from despised and depleted sufferer to a daughter at peace with her world. She belongs. And then Jesus says 
to this hemorrhaging woman, daughter, your faith has made you, made you well. Sozo in Greek, which means saved or healed or preserved or rescued. In wholeness and completeness, Jesus says, go in peace. Jesus says to Jairus, do not fear, only believe or trust. Jesus says all along this road, let me do my thing and you'll see. You'll see salvation and health and restoration and life restored and people restored into community for and by the community of faith in which they belong. These are God's words to you and to me and to those that we know and that we don't know. And for this, we say thanks be to God. Amen. Together we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of hope, the ministry of your church extends across borders, from nearby neighbors to far and distant countries. Accompany all those who labor eagerly in service of the gospel, that through your good news all might experience transformation. We pray especially for this assembly and all those gathered together in worship. Revive our spirits, renew our relationships, and rekindle our faith that we might experience resurrection in this community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the air we breathe, the water we drink, the land that provides our food. We pray for those suffering from extreme heat and drought. Guard all species of plants and animals from harsh changes in climate and empower us to protect all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Righteous God, we pray for nations and their leaders. Give them a spirit of compassion and steer them towards a fair distribution of resources that none among us would have too little or too much. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, your touch has the power to make us whole. We pray for those suffering from physical or mental illness. Today, we pray for the rescue and recovery teams at work in Miami, as well as the families of those who await news of their missing loved ones, and for those who are grieving. Grant hope and patience in the midst of struggle and sorrow. Embrace those who are sick. Especially today, we pray for Cindy, Bob, Jerry, Gladys, Ginny, and all those we name before you now. Surround them with your unwavering presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take this time to share the peace with those around you. God's peace with those online. As always, be mindful of those that need to hear God's message of grace, mercy, and healing. The Lord is here. God's spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is indeed right and <laughs> it is indeed that we should praise you, God of love, our source and our fulfillment. For you create all things, and in you we live and move and have our being. From your own being you sent Jesus among us to reveal your care for all you have made and showed us your way of reconciliation. Therefore, with people of every nation, tribe, and language, with the whole church on earth and in heaven, joyfully we give thanks and sing.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. Send your Holy Spirit upon us that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son and be filled with your life and goodness. Strengthen us to do your work of living lives of justice, love, and prayer as we are your body in the world. Unite us in Christ and grant us your peace. All glory and honor are yours, our loving creator, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. I would invite you to reveal your bread. And with these words, receive the promise. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. I would invite you to reveal your cup, and with these words, receive the promise. This is the blood of Christ, shed for you. Amen. I would invite you, if you have those with you that are not communing today, to lay your hands on their head, make the sign of the cross, on their forehead and remind them that they are beloved children of God. I would invite you to stand as you are comfortable and able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Receive the blessing. Go out among the outcasts and the grieving and speak the word of life and hope. Do not fear, but trust in God's word. Watch for the Lord with eager expectation and be generous with all God has given you. May God respond to your every cry with mercy. Christ Jesus, take you by the hand and lift you to life. And the Holy Spirit, build you up in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in passion, and in love. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.